This week's top 10 trending skincare poll is cream cleansers, and this has actually become probably one of my favorite skincare categories. Maybe it's just my perception, but I feel like cream cleansers used to really target delicate skin types, but they've improved so much over the years, their textural variety has come a long way, and just their effectiveness and efficiency has improved so much as well. So I'll go through this list from 10 to 1. As I've mentioned before, the results come from a public vote from my Instagram stories page. Hundreds of people participate, so it's a fairly wide poll. Um, so come follow me over there at Sand by the Counter, but let's get straight into the list. Number 10 on the list is the Saatchi Skin Saponins Cream Cleanser. This is a pretty new release for the brand and they are a small brand that I love. I think they just design products with a lot of intention, a lot of care with the goal of, you know, creating really original products. This is a cream cleanser, but it has a little bit more of like a gummy texture. So it's quite unique from that perspective. It's purifying, but not drying. Uh, it smells really nice and the color is a lot of fun. Number nine on the list is the Corez or Kors, Corez, I think, Greek Yogurt Foaming Cream Cleanser. This starts off as a sort of traditional cream texture, but develops into a very rich and kind of thick leather, and it has a very enveloping fragrance. So it's very fragrance forward, but that makes it all the more enjoyable. Number nine is actually a tied vote. So the second one in this position is the Isentree Yam Root Vegan Milk Cream. This is the only cleanser on the list that I haven't personally tried. So let me know in the comments what your feelings are. I really don't know much about it. I'd love to hear your feedback. Number eight on the list is the Ordinary Glycolipid Cream Cleanser. I'm a big fan of this one actually, and one of my favorite products from The Ordinary. It has almost like a lotiony, creamy texture, so it's not as rich as some of the others on this list. But it also has this pleasant sort of coconut smell from the raw ingredients that I really enjoy. So this is a great one on the more affordable side. Number eight was actually also a tied vote. So the second one in the eighth position is the Tatcha The Rice Wash Cleanser. I feel like this is an excellent cleanser, but I'd probably consider it one of like the stronger ones on the list. It has mild like physical exfoliating properties, not really like a bead or anything. It's kind of like a cellulose effect. So it's almost like a rolling action. Um, but if you, unless your skin is like super resilient, you might find that this will be too much to use daily. And I guess if you use like acids and retinoids regularly, then having this on top as a daily cleanser might be a little bit too much but I very much enjoy having it as this like boost of brightness when my skin just wants like a touch of physical exfoliation. Cause as much as like people love acids and whatever, there's just something about a physical exfoliator that brightens skin tone instantly in a way that other products can't really achieve, at least in my opinion. Number seven on the list is the La Roche-Posay Tolerian Cream Cleanser. Now I'm not exactly sure if this comes in different varieties depending on where you are in the world. I feel like there's always slight variations depending on different countries, but it's probably the same formula. If you know different, let me know. This is definitely a popular option. In my opinion, it doesn't really cleanse that effectively. So when I've tried it in the past, it was just a little bit too gentle. I didn't feel like it actually cleansed my skin that well. Having said that, this line is more about sensitive skin types and it will work well for like a delicate kind of cleanse. So it totally makes sense. I understand why it's popular, just not quite in my lane. <laughs> Number six on the list is the Naturium Multi Calm Cream Cleanser. This is Naturium's best cleanser in my opinion, and I wish it were more popular. I feel like the niacinamide one gets all the glory. It's just super comforting, but rinses really well, and it doesn't leave a kind of film that is sometimes notorious for cream cleansers in general. They've just done a really good job at balancing the texture and the resulting effect. Number five on the list is the Stratia Velvet Cleansing Milk. This is a little bit more of a fluid texture that comes in a convenient pump bottle. I'm a fan of this one too. It feels a little bit lighter on the skin and you can definitely use it as a daily, easy, on the go kind of cleanser. It doesn't take any effort to use. It just works well, rinses clean, ticks a lot of the boxes. Although I have seen some comments saying that more recently they've noticed a film being left on the skin. So I don't know if that's just batch variation, but that hasn't been my experience using it. Number five is another Tide Vote. I think the last Tide Vote on the list. The second cleanser in the fifth position is the CeraVe Cream to Foam Cleanser. 
The texture shift is really interesting in this cleanser. I just really can't get on board with like that CeraVe scent because obviously they don't use any masking ingredients from what I can tell. So it just smells like the raw ingredients, but it just bothers me. I really can't get on board with CeraVe. Sorry to be a hater. I understand all the germs love it, blah, blah, blah. Just a brand that's not for me. Number four on the list is the Jordan Samuel Skin, the Matinee Cream Cleanser. I consider this one a touch more purifying. It's like a cream cleanser crossed with a bit of a clay effect, but not in the sense that it's drying. It's still quite a soft, you know, delicate cleansing experience. Just the clay feels like it's drawing out impurities a little bit more. Number three on the list is the Kate Somerville Goat Milk Moisturizing Cleanser. This is a very comforting and soothing cleanser and I really like the fact that it has a fairly enveloping fragrance. In my opinion, the whole fear of sensitive skin and fragrance is very overblown. So I actually like the fact that Kate Somerville has designed this product range with more sensitive skin in mind, but they still include fragrance because everybody should have the opportunity to use, you know, products with a bit more of a sensorial effect. There are now plenty of fragrance-free options around. So, you know, maybe having a few fragrance ones still, you know, in the market is a good thing. Number two on the list is Build Skincare Bee Wash. In my mind, this is the number one cleanser, but it just missed out on the actual number one vote. If you followed me for a while, you'll know how much I absolutely love Build as a brand. Bee Wash in particular is such a standout product. It starts off as a powder and then transforms into this creamy microfoam. So it's not really an actual cream cleanser. That's just the resulting feel that you get from the foam because it's so fine. It's almost unbelievably fine. I often use this as a single cleanse as well because it's just that effective. And because it's so gentle, I can leave it on my skin and really have a thorough cleansing experience without stripping my skin barrier. Area. I also want to mention that some people assume that Bee Wash will have an exfoliating effect just because it's in a powder format. It's definitely not like that. There's no exfoliating particles. There are no enzymes. This is a gentle daily cleanser that should work across the board for all skin types. Truly, truly one of my favorite products ever. And also just super convenient to use because it is in a powder format. So you can throw it in your bag for the gym. You can travel with it easily. It's not going to spill or break. And you can really control the amount of powder to water ratio that you want to use to influence the texture that you end up with. Number one on the list is the Skin Rocks Cream Cleanser. Now, if you don't know, Skin Rocks is from Caroline Hirons. That's her brand, very much an industry icon and somebody that I've looked up to for years. Um, I've just always appreciated her content and her kind of ability to balance different brands from indie to the large, you know, corporates and things like that. So she's been very inspiring to me and I was very excited to see Caroline bring out her own skincare line. I really like that this cleanser comes in two different forms Format. So there is a fragranced version and also fragrance free. Um, they both work the same. I can't tell a texture apart. I personally like the fragranced version. It smells sort of a bit citrusy, a little bit minty, just really enjoyable. And the texture is really thick and luscious. So it's a very like in-depth cleansing experience and it rinses really well without leaving too much of a film behind. That's the end of this week's list. Thank you for hanging out with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, let me know if you've got any thoughts on the list or if there are any cleansers that you want to try. Um, and also let me know what you'd like to see voted on in the upcoming skincare polls. I don't have any set schedule, so we can definitely move it around depending on feedback. Um, I think next week we're moving into essences and toners um, and we might circle back to cleansers at some point later on in the year. But yeah, I always love to hear what your feedback is and what you actually want to see. So I'll see you in the next video.